everybody. My name is Alan. On behalf of the crew, I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Bridging Heaven and Earth. You know, when I was sitting here waiting, you know, waiting for everything to be ready, I mean, the thought that kept going through my head was, you know, can't you just feel it? Can't you just feel the, the energies bubbling, you know, the, in, in essence, the love bubbling? You know, for us at Bridging, we see that in specific ways, but I mean, you can feel it just you know, cruising across this planet, cruising in a way across this universe. That there's a bubbling underneath the craziness, just seeping it through like, you know, like the little seed, the, the, you know, the piece of grass coming up through the concrete in New York City. How did it get there? Where is the seed stored? And there's this incredible bubbling of love. And the new paradigms and the bridge between heaven and earth in the oneness it is is here it's here you can feel it you know for us we're seeing i was just saying earlier you know we've been doing the show 12 years now and we've done this is the middle 200s in a way and all these years we've built up in stations because we knew that the message of love and oneness was a message that everyone needs and everybody wants to share and it was our destiny to do it here at Bridging. And we'd, you know, get in two cities and five cities and 25 cities and 50 cities now, you know, upwards of 150 cities. And every month the people at Bridging, you know, send out these tapes and all the different formats for all the different cable stations and how you know, how beautiful that was and how beautiful that is. And yet now we're up, we're in the process of uploading all these shows to both Google Video and YouTube, the, I guess the premier video websites on the planet. And, you know, probably at this moment we have, you know, 230 hours of energy, of shows, of manifestations, of hundreds and hundreds of people dedicated to the oneness with the intention of joyously and lovingly sharing their gift of connection, of consciousness, of love, of healing, of healing the heart of this planet. And can't you just feel it? Can't you feel that new wave, a new shift that will come together joyously and lovingly in abundance to be love, to, to be love in motion as human beings on this planet and to play in the glory of this magnificent earth. And can't you just feel it? And how fortunate we are to be part of that time, part of this time, part of that recognition, part of that understanding. And you know, again, we have a guest whose life is dedicated to that, to literally feeling love and sharing it. I mean, we were talking earlier, and Jean-Claude Gerard Coven has had this knowledge, this hunger, this realization, this awakening since he was a kid. You know, he's a long-time, world-renowned author and spiritual teacher. He has an abiding, had and has an abiding love for the mystery of creation. Uh, his new book, Going Deeper, is just a, it's a magical, wondrous journey. And, you know, the subtext is how to make sense <laughs> of your life when your life doesn't make any sense or makes no sense. I mean, how do we come into the no sense of the oneness and that's what his life is about and we have two extraordinary videos an unusual video for bridging we have a, vi a video of I'll explain a little later after the meditation but a Sri Shimnoi uh, interview video that I did with him off offset here that we don't normally do we had been bridging had been given an award and we were down there and it worked out that we did this about half hour interview and we just showed a couple of questions and we figured we'd give you that as a, uh, you know, kind of just a feel for what went on down there and we'll have more in the later shows. 
then we have a beautiful music video from you know an old friend of bridging Sarah West who's just you know uh, just a beauty she's just a beauty and her voice is just a great gift and as most of you know and I've been talking about it for a long time we've done a lot of uh, art project shows we've done two and we have a third one coming up in a couple of months we're in the middle of this uh, international bridging art project where we got this vision to contact and just let the information out that we're you know calling forth creative people anybody any age any shape any size any country to create a new original piece based on the theme bridging heaven and earth and to get those pieces to us and we'll show them and we'll show two of the pieces that came in and we knew that it would be like acupuncture for the planet and we've literally gotten these paintings from all over Europe and Canada and New Zealand and New Mexico and all over the United States. I guess New Zealand is a country in Mexico is a state, but you know, geography has never been one of my strong suits. But uh, literally all over the world, and, and now we're starting the second wave and we're getting all these new pieces in, and we want to show you two of them. One is from an old friend of mine, Daryl Brookstein. We go back, I don't know, not hundreds of years, but a long time. And the other one is Nicole Helene Wood, two beautiful pieces. So we'll have two beautiful videos. We'll have two beautiful pieces of art, uh, Jean-Claude. And again, it's an opportunity to feel it, to feel the love and share it. So join me in a short meditation. Then we'll, I'll explain a little bit about the Sri Shimnoi video. And, and then we'll have Jean-Claude with us. So please join me in a short meditation. Thank you. So yeah, so we were contacted just recently uh, that the Sri Shimnoi organization, Sri Shimnoi, uh, had heard about bridging and watched the shows, and uh, the, he generally gives out these series of awards. Uh, he's given them out to Utant and uh, the Dalai Lama, I think, and uh, you know a lot of really you know, beautiful people and beautiful organizations, and he wanted to give one to Bridging. It's lifting up the world with a oneness heart. That was, that's the name of the award, and there's a thing, and you'll see actually on the video, it was around my neck, and I was just thinking, that that's what it says on it. And, and then we just worked out that we'd do this interview, and what you'll see is the first question I asked him, and the last question I asked him was about probably a 25, 30 minute interview, but you'll see the first question and the last question and how he answered it and you know that's what his life has been dedicated dedicated to is feeling love and sharing it so we'll have the first video Sri Shimnoi me interviewing him in San Diego after we got this award so please enjoy okay so welcome it's so beautiful to be here with you so I mean we talk about on the bridging show that it's dedicated to the oneness it's about love it's about oneness that's what your life has been about. Why don't you talk a little bit about what love and oneness mean to you? What, how, did, how does that move well, through you? There is something called human love. Human love is to possess and be possessed. The divine love is, is to give and give and give and not to expect anything. Divine love is founded upon oneness. In human love, there is always expectation. I give you something, I expect something else from you. The divine love, it is unconditional, unconditional. So, if you can love God unconditionally, then you will be pleased. But if there is condition, you can never be pleased. So, once you accept the spiritual life, we try to do everything for the betterment of humankind unconditionally. Otherwise, we shall blame the world. The world have done so much for you. What have you done? Here, the divine love will, will, will try to fulfill 
the world in God's own way. We pray and meditate, and from our prayer life, when we pray, we feel that we are talking to God. And when we meditate, we feel that God is talking to us. Now we too are here. At one point, I am talking to you, and then again, you speak to me. So here, we pray, we meditate. When we pray, we look like this, upward, and we feel that God is listening to our prayer. And then when we meditate, we dive deep within, and we feel that God is communicating with, us, with me. If there was one thing or one thing you would like, you know, the world to know, I mean, you've, you've been all over the world, you've spoken, but if this message, if this video could reach every person on the planet, well, what would you like them to, to hear from you? What would you like to vibrate to them right yeah. now? It's very simple at the same time, very <laughs> difficult for one message. Only each individual must try to feel that he is, she is a unique dream of God. If I feel that I am a unique dream of God, then I shall try my very best to do well in everything. Because that time I am, I am linked with God, with my inner pilot. I am, he is dreaming in and through me, and I am his dream. Whether I am five year old or I am octogenarian or I am, all this we have to think that we are children in the heart of God, in the heart of God's creation. And God is, is, is watching us in his heart garden. He is see, watching us whether we are playing with these flowers. So many countless flowers, countless flowers. These are all human beings. So my fellow with them, if in one sentence I can tell you about my, about my way of life, that love God, serve God. Love God, love God the Creator, love God the creation equally. Love God the Creator, love God the creation as well equally. Then God is bound to be pleased with us. We cannot separate them. Creator and the creation must go together. Love God the Creator, serve God the creation. Then we shall be able to fulfill God in His own way. Thank yeah, how beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you for Thank you so much. See, I'm so grateful to you for for having given me this opportunity I feel to way. serve millions of people. When you get an opportunity, if we can avail ourselves of that opportunity, then you feel you're fulfilled. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi everybody, welcome back. So that was a beautiful video. So we'll have more of that and some of the award ceremony as you know the shows get on as they get edited later. And also the picture you're seeing now in between Jean-Claude and I is Nicole Helene Wood, The Flower of Forgiveness. It's one of these literally hundreds of extraordinary pieces that are coming in all over the planet. You, the effect that, that the creation of these paintings are having and to be here and to be on television and to be all over the world available with that energy is really a a powerful thing so we're really fortunate to be you know part of that so Jean Claude welcome so glad you're here what, a, what fun what absolute fun to just be sharing space with you so tell me I mean when I you know talk to the opening I mean from the time you were a little kid just this the way I described it, hunger to know knowing realization I mean I mean did you feel like that bubbling from the t really young age in a different way in a weird way I'd look up at the stars and know that I was looking at home, and it wasn't the location, it was just the, far, the fact that it wasn't here. And I'd talk to my parents and all the other adults in my life, and I knew very early on they were spinning me. Not that they wanted to, they didn't know. And the level of questions that I was asking, I remember asking my parents about God. What is God? So they brought me this book called One God. And that didn't make sense, so they brought their friend in who was... Two gods. Two gods. <laughs> Three gods. How many do we have to give you to show you? I'll tell you what I want. I want an infinite number of gods that's one god. Where it just 
the God concept blows out of all containers, exceeds what our mind can hold, and is all that is. There is nothing but God. When you play the game of, of discovery and you don't listen you know, to the word of or the doctrine of and all that kind of stuff, and you go out there, every direction you look, every situation you're in, every person you meet, every flower you see, every tree, no matter what it is, is God. There is nothing in all creation beside God. So for me, God cannot be a noun. There is no such thing as the Creator. It is the unfoldment of creation itself. It's not that God is in all things, it's God is all things. Manifest or know is all part of the oneness. There is no separation. This is the illusion that, wasn't well, it fun to pretend we're separate? But when you see it from that other vantage point, there is no separation, there is only the oneness. Infinity, beyond anything we could ever grasp, is one. Do you remember, I mean, because in my life, I remember at one point, I mean, I remember as a little kid, I, I semi-knew it, then at one point in my life, it was like, oh, there's, I remember now, there's one energy, we're all it, and how do I live with that recognition in this human body? Do you have a, a remembrance of a, a, a moment where that was like, oh, I remember? With absolute certainty? Uh, yeah, I would say. What a, what a wonderful question. When I look back at my life, I mean, from this sitting right here now, I never experienced passion in anything that I did. I was always playing someone else's game until I began writing Going Deeper. Wow, so, interesting. And that was... Oh, well, it, I was into my 60s Wow. when I started that. And you, you were having a pretty good life and everything, but there wasn't that fire. You weren't on fire? I remember meeting the lady that is currently my wife, and I was in South Africa. I had just sold my business for what I thought was an obscene amount of money. I had gotten all the little brass rings that you have to collect when you're riding on the carousel. And you look at them and you realize, my God, this is tarnished plastic. It's so small. <laughs> In the vastness, this is one and small. I had all the things that I was supposed to have as a, as a successful human being in their eyes. And I remember looking at her one day, and in a moment of just incredible honesty, I said, I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. I have been chasing the wrong game, and I don't know the right game. Wow. And you had a lot of spiritual experiences earlier, and you had this... So, I mean, it's, it's, we were talking earlier, I mean, this is a really interesting experiment that that, is, that simple truth and that one reality is, in a sense, so hidden in clear view. Absolutely. Not, and not realizing it. And, you know, when I look back, I said, okay, kid, Here's the advice I would have given myself if I could speak you know, from hindsight, from this, this vantage point. Follow your passion. Or as Joseph Campbell would say, follow your bliss. If it doesn't resonate inside the essence of who you are, then keep looking for something else that does. You cannot live someone else's dreams. It's not somebody coming up to you at graduation party and say, Plastics. <laughs> we both are from the same <laughs> Dustin Hoffman. Absolutely, right, from right, a graduate. Right. Um, it isn't that. The S, each of us, each of us, now we're getting into the creation myth all over again. We are each an aspect of the oneness experiencing itself through the point from which we view. So our gift to this vast cosmic hologram is our uniqueness. Not our ability to conform, but our ability to follow with courage the curiosity we had as yeah, a child. Fearlessly. Fearlessly. Joyously, joyously and fearlessly, yeah. And nothing, I, nothing... I, you know, it's just you have to catch fire to do that. Yes. Or else it's like, why, you know, why bother? Yes. But when you're on fire, you have to. Yes. And that fire, you know, the fire, the, the term for it is the dark night of the soul. Or I use it to, you get to the point of compression, past which every direction you move is up. You have to get to that point in your life when you cry, uncle. And I give. Say, I give. <laughs> I give. And that was my point. My point curiously came at the epitome, at the epitome, at the apex of what would have appeared to be my success. success. That was my dark night of the soul, was winning the game. And realized yeah, I, well, I, I had won nothing. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> and I had spent a lot of time winning nothing. Right? Yeah. On, you know, earth time. And yeah, all. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so at that moment, did that certainty of oneness of, of that the way you described become real to you progressively progressively um, not as real as it will be tomorrow mm -hmm. now, this really is for me 
constant letting go. It's like you're in the center of this incredibly beautiful running river. You don't have any interest in the sides. You don't want to get entangled in the eddies and the in the side currents anymore. And it's taking you to some infinite destination. And all you care about is the journey of being in the river. Yeah, there's no destination. There is no destination. Yeah, if you're not enjoying this moment, where are you going? If this moment isn't magical for me, then I need not to be in this moment. And each moment becomes magical. The trick is when you show up. When you're there. When you're there. When your consciousness yeah. is there. And if you can be there and evoke it for another being, and the two of you can create a unique space in the cosmos, boy, that's magic. It's you fall in love. You literally fall in love with every being you meet when you show up. And, and they're willing to. And, and there's and no time and space. That's right. That's the infinite. Yeah. That's it. So if we can create that in every moment of our lives, make it the game to bring joy and purpose and value to every single being you meet in every instant. And not even make it as a, I mean, that would be your intention, but at some point, you're just love and motion, the way I would describe it. So how, how would love and motion be in this instant? I don't know, the way love and motion would be. Exactly. And there's no rule, there's no... No, no. It's the inner resonance, and you can't lie. Just like you can't lie to a little, you know, an infant. They'll know. Or to a pet. Right. They'll know. You, right. know, you can you say could... all the right words and do all the right things, but they'll know. And we all know. Inside the inner being that is that exquisite gem, that infinite God continuum that we all are. I mean, there is only the one. It's not that you are part of the oneness. You are the oneness. In all of creation, there is only you. And that's equally true for every being on this planet. Now, when we compress ourselves into an illusion and an ego and hold that as value, and then we get together with other little egos, and we think that because we have enough consensus, enough of us believe a particular thing, this That's must right. be truth and right. with a capital T. Wow. And when people say, what did you learn down here? I say, only one thing. What you see depends on where you're looking from. If you absolutely have an investment in holding on the point from which you view, it's not a shock to anybody that what you see never changes. Yeah, pickpockets only see pockets. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go, pickpockets. I love that. that pickpockets only see pockets. And you can have very fundamentalist pickpockets. You certainly <laughs> can. And it leads them to strange places. Yes. Right. And deep pockets. Deep, <laughs> deep holes. Right. No, it's pretty amazing, isn't yeah. it? It's, it's the will. If you constantly are willing to shift the point from which you view, you get to realize that you know nothing. All this is... And you don't have to, because no. what a what's the point? How liberating is that? Right, exactly. <laughs> you have no expectations of yourself. I, you know, we were talking earlier, I mean, it's like you're lighter, lighter, and lighter, and then people would talk to define yourself as enlightened. Just keep getting lighter. Don't worry about when you cross. <laughs> yeah. You know, just, just take it easy. Keep letting go. Right, Absolutely. keep letting go. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. You know, I was kidding around with, with one of the crew guys before, saying there's only three things in the world worth taking seriously. I haven't come across any. And no matter what you say, I, you know, it's like E.F. Hutton. <laughs> so they listen. Um, and if you think you come across one, please don't tell me. I have one in here. And no matter what situation I'm in, I check and I say, you know what, this isn't one of them. Um, that takes a lot of pressure off. It takes infinite pressure off you. And what we were talking about before, I, whenever I find myself in a pickle, which is more often than I care to admit, <laughs> I say to myself, Jean-Claude, there is no you in this equation. You think there is, there isn't. This is not about you in any manner, shape, or form. Serve. Lighten. Lighten. Take it easy. Take it easy. <laughs> take it easy. It's okay. Take it easy. You know, after so many years, oh, please. maybe you want to exhale a little. <laughs> You're always inhaling. <laughs> always inhaling. Big up. How big do you up. expect to breathe? <laughs> And so when did, okay, so at some point you had this dark night, I've achieved success, who gives a crap? In other words, <laughs> who gives a crap, but this isn't giving me anything. This, this and it, yeah. in a sense, I've wasted time on that level of things. I mean, not in a true sense, but okay. So, and then how soon thereafter did, you know, this going deeper, this fire just like start lifting you? It's sort of the process of being pregnant. You know, and you know this, it's happening. Um, when do you give birth? And it, that's what it was. It just got to be so big 
that there's little I could do other than give birth to the book. And I mean, there was you know, a whole story behind how it happened, but it happened when it needed to happen. And now when I look back at all the things that I wasted my time on, I didn't waste it at all. Exactly. Yeah. The training you had to do that, right? I yeah. had to do right. that and be trained in each of the disciplines and understand the matrix of mm -hmm. the illusion and be able, at least to a degree, have mastery over that matrix um, to be able to understand with compassion what others go through and what they're still caught in and then trying to create the bridge between heaven and earth. No, that's exactly so right. The, I mean, the, yeah, yeah, you have to know yeah, it, it's, the it's, suffering it, in a way. Yeah. It's, it's easy, you know, it's, it's easy to pontificate. It really is. It really is. <laughs> you and noticed. To, oh, my God. There's a lot of it going on, isn't there? And it, a lot of it comes from me, you know, so I, well, I need to be very mindful. People have been that. saying that. <laughs> I know, I know. I know. I've, I've got to learn to get past that. But <laughs> a lot of the stuff that comes, I, you know, you realize, my God, if it can be put into words, if I can express it, if I can write it, it ain't it. The Tao that can be spoken and shared is not the Tao. It's, it's the ineffable journey that expands from the instant into the infinite. Being in that space, the music we talked about before, the music that's played in the crack between the keys, that's what you listen to, but not with your ears, but with your whole resonant heart, with a heart mind. And opening that up, I mean, the rest of my life now is devoted to try to figure out other ways of expressing this and creating the vehicles for others to experience for a small instant who they really are and what the magnificence of every single being on this planet is. You extend throughout all of creation is only you. That's true of every being on this planet. It doesn't get bigger than this. How do we create that you know, the, the opportunity, which is what you do so well? You know, it's interesting because, I mean, when I was interviewing the Sri Shimnoi and I saw part of the interview, you know, I asked him, and to me, it's like there's some realization when Jesus said the Father and I are one, which is basically what you're talking about, is that there is no separation. And that is a true experience. Now, does that mean you're God? But like you said, I mean, what's the separation? Oneness is oneness is oneness is oneness. But if you divide one by one, you get one. There you go. <laughs> you're back there. You're back there. I mean, no matter where you move in the infinite, no matter what direction you go, you meet yourself. And the journey, if you understand creation, a larger creation myth, the purpose behind, the impetus behind all creation itself, is to allow the oneness to experience itself infinitely. And all of creation is simply a gradation of awareness, a gradation of consciousness. What would it be like? What an amazing experiment if we would create an illusion in which we put points of consciousness that perceive themselves separate and abandoned by the one and, and separate from each other. Well, that would be an amazing experiment, wouldn't what, it? They call it flat Earth. You know, you're right. <laughs> you're right. No, I mean, you know, we talk a lot about this is an unbelievable experiment here to take the infinite, seemingly split it up, put it in seemingly separate containers and have people forget the oneness. Exactly. And how that would play itself out in a natural course is just an amazing thing. Now, view the oneness as a vast, infinite cosmic hologram to which we're all connected. Every experience, every emotion, every word, every thought, every deed we ever have, constantly, instantly, real time, gets fed into that cosmic hologram, which is the all that is. And now we understand the richness of the potential of the information that we could send up if we have fearless courage, if we experience joy, if we actually come in touch with our own passion. That's real grist for this mill, not the path of being a good sheep and following and winning. We're in an arcade. You win a game, you get a stuff, you know, you, you spend $10 on, on throwing rings and eventually something happens and the guy gives you a consolation prize of an animal to take home right. that he just bought for 75 cents. And you think a good done, deal. What a, what a deal. What a deal. <laughs> a very shrewd cookie. What a deal. If ever you want to understand something fun, wait till the carnival closes, everybody goes home and sit and have coffee with the guys that run the booths. Yeah, the carnies are the greatest. Oh. They have a real view of, of you who do that. And it's not, it's not an unproductive view to hold. Be in their shoes and see what they see. 
watching you throwing your $10 bills out to get a 75 cent doll. And you realize that you're doing this with much of your life. How exciting this illusion is. Yeah, how much time and attention, which is in a sense all we have in a certain way, we spend on things that don't fire us, don't give us joy and Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, and that to me is really the sad part, and that, and that leads to everything else. But, the, but it's really the root is that separation from feeling that separate from the one. And then from there, all hell breaks loose. Imagine the next time you have an apple, you eat that apple knowing that this is the last apple food act you will ever have in this lifetime. You'll pay attention. Boy, will you pay attention. And if you could manage to do that to some degree, I mean, to the degree that it works for you, in every instant of your life. If, if you're there. If you're there. If the only thing this life asks of you to be magnificent is show up. Show up. But you don't. You, your attention units are all over the place. Um, there's this thing that women do. I'm gonna get, you're going to get a lot of stuff. Yeah, no, they, you'll probably get all photo them on to you. <laughs> women, women have this thrill of multitasking. Men don't know how to do this thing. Where I guess you hold the baby, take care of the wash, and you know, answer the phone at the same time. We can't do this. And I remember being in a, in a workshop with Jean Houston, and she was talking about Margaret Mead, who lived with her for a while. And Margaret was able to write two different things on two different tablets with two different hands. And I'm going, she was trying to get us to do this. But she, why would I ever want to do that? It's not just the content. It's the journey, the flow, the calligraphy, the way the words come together, the magic of it. I don't want to do this so I can move on. I want to do this so I can do this. So this whole concept of multitasking, and I, I, I don't know that it's a feminine thing or a masculine thing, but we need to take a look at what we do. And you see the downside, of course, when people are on the cell phone and they drive. I mean, all the things that they do in text messages when they drive. But it's not that that could cause an accident. It's that's robbing them or diluting oh, them that from moment. that moment. Right. Yeah. All right, so maybe what we'll do now is have the Sarah video. It's a beautiful, beautiful video. <clears throat> Voice of the Angels, Sarah West. She's been on the show a bunch of times. She's just a you know, real true beautiful spirit and beautiful person we'll have another piece of art when we get back and we'll talk some more about love and oneness and just you know the beauty of it all so here's sarah enjoy mm -hmm.
Hi everybody, welcome back. So that was a beautiful piece from Sarah. So the the art you see in between us is a piece called Knowledge done by Daryl Brookstein. Daryl and I go back a really long way and you know he did this piece. I know it took him a really long time and he, he really put a lot of love. It's called Knowledge and you know it's just another example of just the awesome numbers and the different formats of how that energy, how that creative force in, in you know in creating for bridging heaven and earth and that peace come, can come through so we're back with Jean Claude so welcome back <laughs> welcome. yeah yeah it's good to be back so you know we talk about the oneness we talk about the love we talk about people feeling separate in your experience how how can people start to feel less separate I mean, it, it, you know, if somebody's saying, yeah, you know, these guys are talking about that and they seem to have an experience of that, how can I have that experience? What would you, what would you say in the non-saying? Wow. Become an observer and watch in life where you see the non-separation. Where you see it is a kid playing a game, a video game of some kind and they drop into something, or an athlete, and they drop into this space called in the zone. Two lovers, when they're sitting on a park bench, they're in the zone. Um, a mother and a baby, a child playing with a dog, in the zone. That zone exists in every single instant. That zone is egoless. The The parable, of course, is, is um, in the storm when Jesus walked on the water. And everybody got frightened and Peter said, if that's you, Lord, bid me to come. And Jesus said, come. And Peter walked out towards Jesus till he realized he was walking on the water. The second he was aware that he was walking on the water, he began Ego to fall. Came Ego came in and he and said, the weight. And the weight. The, the weight. the weight of the reality of the illusion came in and, and he started sinking. He said, Lord, save me. And then Jesus took his hand. But the second you are aware of being in the zone, you're out of the zone. So he, it's being so completely in the moment that the you disappears. How do you do it? You do it. It's, it's a Zen. You know, how do you shoot an arrow like a Zen? Do it, then you'll understand Zen. I mean, there's, there's no way to filter this through the mind. It's completely experiential. Throughout history, there have been teachers who have tools, like a meditation tool, or a, one of the interesting ways I saw it, uh, done was that the teacher or the big brother, however you would describe it, would talk for hours and would just tire the hell out of you and wear you down, wear your ego down. And by the time the third day of him talking or her talking, I mean, you were gone. You just couldn't hold on to the illusion that long. You're talking about Staff Sergeant Rollins that worked with these that basic guy. training. That guy. Yeah, he did it to me. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean... Are there any in your in your path? Were there any things? I mean, because for me, I mean, I talk about if I would say there were, you know, in using words or using things like that, uh, two things that would be a value for a human being would be some sort of quiet time, call it meditation, some sort of internal looking, a certain technique, and what I would call holy company, being around people whose intention is to have that experience, that recognition. Do you have any three things that you would suggest? No. You can do one or two or any <laughs> anything. Right. You know, do you know where I find it when I, when I speak or, or interact with people and I, I talk all over the world? Is being able to hug someone. And I've done this exercise with people just for the fun of it. You do a few things to warm up and then you hug each other with the pure intention of merging. Absolutely merging, becoming absolutely one, where you actually visualize or however you want to do it, all of your molecules interpenetrating, where there is no line of separation anymore. And you create an entanglement, you know, almost in the quantum physics sense, but you have this entanglement in every interaction, where irrevocably a portion of your being enters that person and a portion of that person enters you and it will always be that way. You can never separate again. And when you get that, you realize that that intimate degree of entanglement occurs 
every instant of your life, whether you're conscious or not, but increasingly as you become increasingly conscious. If you can now set your intention on merging with a flower, with a baby, with a sunset, with an extraordinary piece of music, how much richer you become by doing this consciously, realizing that part of you is always in that clerk that you made smile at the supermarket. No matter what you do, you can never, ever, I mean, the two of us forever are linked, ever, I mean, especially having conversations like this with such intention to bring love and express love. You know, there's Alan and me forever, ever. And I'm thrilled that there is. How joyous that is. Yeah, how lucky we are. How lucky we are. And that we can give this as a gift to every being we're with. That we'll, we'll feel free enough to allow every single being to become part of our structural DNA. And they are. And they are. And they are. So doesn't the conscious act of bringing that in, evoking it, inviting it, begin to dissolve the separation? I don't know. I keep playing with it saying, Tomorrow I'm going to find a better way. That whatever I've done so far has been okay, but it really hasn't worked. And I'm open to tomorrow you saying something that just all of a sudden triggers a whole new way of me looking at stuff. I'm going, that's it. And the next day, the be, next, yeah, right. yeah, the next day <laughs> there's another one. So I, I'm a member of the Truth of the Moment Club. You know, just don't hold me to it tomorrow. Whatever this archive said, just remember this occurred on this particular day, in this particular year. And that's what I thought I saw then. Tomorrow, I think I'll see something else. No, it really is. I mean, how we hold on to yesterday's truth. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. why? I mean, we're a whole different being. Today. I tell myself, I, I tell others as well, you're invited to play with this. If I go to sleep believing something and I wake up the next day believing the same thing, ain't no big deal. I'm stuck. I'm truly stuck. And so you say, okay, what am I stuck in? I'm stuck in that viewpoint that sees this apparent truth. Okay. Hold on to that viewpoint, never let it go, and now move over here. Aware of the fact that part of you will always have that. You don't have that. All of you have that. Now move over here and see if you can see it in a completely different way. Um, the Indians would talk about, you know, walk a lifetime in a man's moccasin. It's not a mile. That's, 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 a, cheap, that's a cheap way yeah, out. Yeah, it's a cheap moccasin. <laughs> a cheap moccasin. <laughs> get a resole. Get a Birkenstock yeah. moccasin. Really? And walk a lifetime in someone's moccasin. And you know, then you begin to have that view of what it's like to carry the load of that perception. And each of us carry a load. The trick is, the way out of the illusion is when we help lighten each other's load. We can't take ours out. We can take the other one out. It's like the banquet. I can't, can eat, I can't feed myself, but I can feed you. And you can reach in and feed me. And if we use that metaphor and figure out how to do it, and I can't say that I have yet, I just feel the inherent rightness of it. If I can help you lighten your load and you can help me lighten my load, we'll open this up as a way for all of us serving each other to do that. When people go into their own personal paths, a lot of them are quite selfish. I'm trying to become enlightened. When I'm enlightened, then I can help. Yeah. Be there now. Yeah, how about today? How about today? <laughs> and for all of those you know, incredible beings that spend their entire life trying to leave this planet. I say, I have one question. What are you doing here? Yeah, well, why did you come? <laughs> right. You know, you, right. you were out of this illusion. Why did you come in here if only to leave? Maybe you came to help others find ways of leaving. So people have real free will, beyond choice. You know, choice is made by predilection and bias and preference, mm -hmm. but beyond choice. When you work in free will, the only motivating factor, the only motivating factor is curiosity. What is that like? What is that like? What is that like? No, I don't like that. Oh, I like that. It's just the curiosity to explore infinitely. Now you're in the heart mind of God. That is my will is thy will and thy will be done. That's your innate, pure curiosity, finding expression through you in your life. How rich, how joyous, what an expression. It's fun to sit and watch anyone doing something they love doing and they do it well whether it's a guy with a jackhammer breaking stuff up if he's into that boy that's a treat if it's the kid we talked about on the pinball machine who's phenomenal that's a treat or a phenomenal you know a world-class athlete that's amazing to watch 
you know, when you watch Tiger Woods being Tiger Woods, when he's not aware of, of you know, the situation on the golf course, he's just in that zone. That is extraordinary to watch. Or Yitzhak Perlman, or, or any any great expression of love in art, in movement, in music. Any, you know, it's infinite in words. Yeah, yeah because it's a vibration, and it's in every moment. So, however you're manifesting it. Yeah, you know, I'm watching our daughter with her with her child, and wow. How old is this child? Chase is now eight months, wow. four days. Three hours and seventeen seconds, but I don't, I don't count. No, you're, you're not into it. I'm not into that. No. <laughs> and to watch, I never knew she had in her this level of heart bonding. It's, it's innate. It exists in every being. And you know, I'm watching the bond come up with this little child, this little baby, this infant, and myself. And what happens is every single time, excuse me. He, he giggles. He thinks I'm the funniest thing. I, I've got to be wearing some sort of jester hat with bells and something that he sees. That he that, sees. That he sees. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I was um, I was very privileged. I mean, we're really going far afield here, but this is fun. My daughter not only invited her to be at the birth, but I actually assisted at the birth. I was part of the birth team. Wow. So I was watching this baby crown for 20 minutes. Wow. And I remember the nurse looked at me. I made the first deal with this kid. I said, here's the deal. You don't talk baby talk to me, and I'll never talk baby talk to you. And we've been bonded ever since. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good deal. Thank you, Granddad. Give me five. Yeah. yeah. Right. You knew you had some kid on your hand. I knew. Uh, this kid was a, he was born, you know, on such a date they gave him the master number 22, which we share, which is kind of interesting. And we had a bond the second he came out. Oh. And you're going, wow. What ego? What ego? It's totally nonverbal. Do I understand it? No. The second my mind gets involved in the process, yeah, it's, it's, it's over. Yeah, it's okay. over. So I have to be there mindlessly for us to create this space. So how do you deal in this illusion without an agenda? We all have them. You know, we may think they're noble, but who doesn't think that one's agenda is noble? And so we go out spinning. And I realize that no matter what somebody tells me on this planet, if it's in words and I can hear it and I can decipher it, I'm being spun. How nice is that? And if I talk and say things to other people, I'm spinning. I have an agenda like everybody else. And so how do we meet where all of the words fall well, away? Could, is there a possibility of communicating without an agenda? That's why I like hugging. How about communicating with words? Is there a possibility? I would say there is. Have I ever done it? I don't think so. Really? You don't think so? No. 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 Think, well, I think the magic... You, do you have a goal? I mean, when you talk about an agenda, is that a goal? Do I have a goal? Yeah, I have a goal. Um, the three things that I push, and I tell people up front, look, here's what I'm selling. You might as well know up front. The first one is increased awareness. Uh, constantly looking to increase personal consciousness for yourself and, and all others. Two is to rekindle a curiosity that you had as a child that you bartered in order to fit in. And, and the sold out. Sold out. No, this, yeah. this is... No, I know. You have to. Total, almost, right. you yeah. have, yeah. You, the illusion creates the illusion that you have to sell out in order to survive. And the third is, to me the most important, is become self-empowered. Become self-referential. Do, do, do you think that at some point you could be, and those things would just be so much part of your nature that you wouldn't have that intention anymore? That the way we would describe it is like love and motion. You would be vibrating those things and not, the, the intention is almost a thought. If you could wave your magic wand and make it so. I would, Are you asking? I, <laughs> consider this a request. All right, please, I will think it over and you come back in two weeks. Okay. All right. Take two hours when you call me in the yeah, morning. I would, I would aspire to that. I would love, I would love to be to have so disappeared and not fight my ego and not not have all those things going on inside of me that I could serve more purely, I would love it. Do I think that there are beings on the planet, masters who can do it? I probably absolutely. Um, I think all of us have within us that innate yeah, it's what we are, really. core of our being right. that just resonates. Um, 
there still is too much of me in the equation. And so for me, it's an ongoing process. You know, we all tend to I write. Mean, I think it is for everybody. It's just, you yeah, know, yeah. how little of it or how often does it not come up or how, you know what I mean? That it, the, fire is, the fire is so hot. You know, you're so passionate, not about anything. You just, you know, like that, that I don't know if we were actually talking on the air when, when you had that experience and you just started, your innards were started rotating. Oh, yeah, 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 That you was, you know, but controllably like that. Yeah, that was totally out of control. Right. But um, I mean, that you're so used to like being on fire. And then be able to contain it and not fall in like Peter into the water. Um, I've got some work to do. I really have some work to do. Moving in a direction, probably. Do I aspire to it? Wouldn't that be fun? Wouldn't it be wonderful we were all at that state? And I think that that is, you know, you talk about the paradigm shift. I think that's exactly what we're shifting to, where we do have that level of entanglement and merging. We create something called a social memory complex where all of us In other are, words, we're communicating with words because that's how people would understand it, but we could also not use words. We could, In other words, there are no rules, and if w words would serve, or French words would serve, who could give a crap <laughs> how, we're, how we're vibrating that energy? Exactly. And if it's through exactly. words. Exactly. Well, that level of intimacy is we're totally in each other's minds. Our minds are merged. So we don't even need to um, coalesce a thought to have an expression. It's not like we're, you know, we're, we're doing telepathy. There is no telepathy. We're in each other. And before even the synapse fires, we have it. So when you let go of all of that concept of separation, communication only presupposes there's a point A and a point B. But when the two of them become one, that level of communication is far more intimate than, than, than bridging than bridging distance. No matter what, you know, 750 miles an hour, we, we have sound travel at, whatever the story you is. You know that we've traveled this show, <laughs> the miracle that this show is literally almost over. I mean, the experience, you know, that really, you know, the merging was possible. You know, the love was possible. You know, if you want any information about the art project, Jean-Claude, you know, going deeper. You know, we're here to share that. So please, Alan, 805-687-2053. 805-687-2053. Good night. We love you. God bless you. Yeah.